Good morning, good evening, and welcome to everyone across the planet. I'm Tony Lontes, and this is Poetry in Motion with Sony Singh. Before I introduce you to our amazing co host, here's what you need to know. If you're listening today on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, please leave us a comment. If you're watching live on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel so you can hear and see more of Sony each and every week for the next four weeks. A reminder too that if you've missed the live show and you're watching this, the third in a series of six, you can always catch up on the Tony TV channel available on LG, Roku and Samsung smart TVs across the planet and the Tony TV app as well as Binge Networks USA, Hero Go TV USA and Sondra Networks USA. That's quite a mouthful. Um, now, before we do our welcome to country, I just want to pay another respectful mention to the passing of Her Majesty the Queen. Today in Australia is a public holiday and national day of mourning. And for those of you listening in the US, the Queen remains our head of state as we are part of a Commonwealth. So we now have a new King, King Charles III, and today is recognition of Queen Elizabeth and her 70 year reign over our Commonwealth. So it's important to acknowledge that that is a phenomenal accomplishment for a woman. So in line with that, I also want to do our welcome to country and respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yubingba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and broadcast. And I want to pay my respect to the elders past and present and all Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander peoples here watching today. Now, as you know, this is the third in a series of six shows with international author Sony Singh. And before I introduce you to this gorgeous human, here's what you need to know. Sony is a cross-cultural seeker of deep knowing. She writes stories of self-discovery to encourage people to accept themselves for who they are and to live life on their own terms. And just that little sentence is a powerful reminder that there are people encourage us, encouraging us to live our lives to the best of our ability and Sony is one of those people. Her tales are of her characters in uh, definitive moments on their life's journey. The mystical and spiritual are an integral part of her storytelling and she as is her multicultural background. Sony is of Indian descent, born in Mexico, raised in Colombia, resides in the United States and is currently visiting Australia. When she's not traveling, reading and writing, she indulges in meditation, yoga, and aromatherapy. Sony's published three books in her Soul Seeker collection of poetry, Embody, Embrace, and Embolden. And her first novel, Lonely Dove, is so close to being released, and we get to chat about it next week. She's also been published in three anthologies, including Blessing the Page, The Colors of Me, and The Wishing Stone. Her first novel, Lonely Dove, will be released very soon, and we'll talk about that next week. Please jump onto Sony's website, sonysing.com, where you can see all about the books and Sony herself. She's also a speaker. Sony, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Tony, for that beautiful introduction, and I'm so pleased and honored to be here with you. Um, Sony and I are talking from complete opposite ends of Australia. So I'm on the eastern side, Sony's on the western side, and we are connected to the amazing team of BBS Radio TV in Texas in the US. So we are truly a global show. Now this week, we get to talk about your first poetry book, Embody. And this also coincides with the release of the paperback version of the book. Yay! Oh, good, awesome! I have to hold it in front of me. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. 
Um, before we wanted to chat, I wanted to remind the audience just how these poetry books came to being and the story around the title of the book. Can you remind the audience, um, Sony, how they came to life and the story around the title of your first poetry book, Embody? Absolutely. So I uh, did not think I had it in me to write poetry. I've always been um, an, a reader of poetry and have appreciated it a lot. I started my writing career uh, or my writing journey really uh, with fiction, uh, writing short stories and novels. Uh, and when COVID hit and we went into lockdown, uh, particularly right at the beginning, I um, sort of especially embraced the uh, process of self-reflection through writing. Uh, and I had that practice already. It was, you know, something that I used, I still do, in fact, every morning, just sort of writing out a uh, stream of consciousness. And uh -huh. when, when, when the pandemic hit, what I noticed is that a lot of what I was writing was very lyrical. Uh, and I, I, I sort of would go back to what I'd written and think, that sounds like a poem. Uh, and sure enough, I'd started taking it out into stanzas and rewriting it. Uh, and all of this is handwritten. Um, and I'd rewrite it and realize, oh my gosh, I think I've written a poem. Uh, and once, <laughs> once I Amazing. opened my phone up to that, I know, just... What a I, gift. It, it, it is a gift because it's not something that I intended. Uh, mm -hmm. And once I realized I was doing that, poems just started coming to me. Uh, I would, you know, it, it started with that ritual uh, during that time. But then eventually, uh, as I sort of just expanded kind of my awareness of, oh, look, I'm writing poems. They'd come in all sorts of places, times. Uh, you know, while I was watching something on TV, while I was reading, uh, in the shower, however it was, and I would just start <laughs> writing them down. I'm and laughing about the shower comment because often when you talk <laughs> to creative people, ideas come in the shower. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. I think it's because you don't have anything else going on. I mean, it's just Except you being in the shower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I just sort of allows for this creativity you know you're still in a way I mean you're still sort of doing your thing but I think that just allows for an openness of things to come through so yeah so I Wonderful. realized I started accumulating uh, a lot of these uh, poems and uh, I don't I think I said oh so I, I did start actually sharing some of them on social media yes. but just as a way of of saying, you know, here's some writing that I, I'm feeling kind of um, sort of pulled to 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 put out there, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't really have an intention of what I was going to do with them either. I just started collecting them. Um, and so you asked me about the title Embody. What I realized when I was going back to to looking at the the poems that I'd written, uh, they they expressed a lot of emotion. Uh, mm. I am not one to express emotion. I'm not the most emotive human being. And so the fact that it was coming out in my writing, um, one was extremely um, cathartic for me because it was yes. a, a huge release. But I also realized that I, I was holding it within, like I was holding it in my body. Uh, uh. And so I, as I was kind of going through different scenarios aches and pains whatever it was uh it, it was the moment i started to write, write it down a lot of it was just releasing and coming out of me so, so that's, that you know, like released the pain that you were feeling when you actually did the discipline of of writing it down because sony oftentimes we'll have things that come into our mind but it actually takes a bit of discipline to stop and write what you're actually what's what's downloading into your mind doesn't it it does and it wasn't it wasn't immediate as in it wasn't uh, necessarily that the the release happened with the writing but it was mm -hmm. i think the openness of something's happening uh and it it seems like i'm gonna uh take this time of isolation to go uh, within and 
I started realizing that I had, for instance, jaw pain because I was grinding my teeth from the anxiety or the, and I'm not yes. also even an anxious person, but just in isolation, I started kind of doing this. And in writing, I, you know, I, I was kind of called to write about what, what I was going through and express it. And that helped me bring awareness to what was happening in my body. And I think it was kind of a, a joint process of, um, writing out what was happening being in that moment and then allowing mm. it to come up and and once i opened that that door for instance it was like a floodgate so i i would uh for instance get into uh, a yoga pose and all of a sudden just break down in tears uh because that particular pose wow. drew something out of me and then i'd go write it <laughs> that's a beautiful story sony it, it really is a beautiful story and I'm hoping that there are millions more people like you that through COVID had a very spiritual journey, being shut down, being separated from family and friends. Of course, there was lots of trauma and grief associated, but it's wonderful to remind everyone that out of that very dark period of time, for you in particular, has come this beautiful gift. Well, and I think it's important to also recognize that when we have these kinds of emotions, a lot of times, you know, they 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 get bigger because we don't express them, um, mm -hmm. because we don't kind of sit with them and, and, and say, you know, what is this about or what is this telling me? And this process really helped me come to terms with my feelings. And particularly for someone like me that prior to this wasn't yes. very in touch with her feelings uh you yeah. know I'd, I'd, I'd push things down uh constantly and so this really helped me heal in multiple levels uh one just to acknowledge that i had that emotion but also just to Aww. allow the, the 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 emotions to kind of run through my body and and and, and be released that's beautiful and so you you channeled these beautiful poems and you then started to think what you were going to do with them um i know you, you talked to the beautiful karen mcdermott from mmh and there was a story and how the title of the first book of poems came about can you share the this with the audience sony yeah absolutely and so you know as as i was writing and, and and the poetry was coming i just started accumulating these pieces of paper um and sometimes they weren't even paper sometimes they were napkins uh or, or whatever oh i love that uh with me uh, at the time uh and so i just started collecting them and uh i had met Karen McDermott uh, at a um, Serenity Press because she has different kind of publishing arms. Yes. So I had met her at a retreat in Castle in Crum Castle in Ireland, the same one that you and I attended, but mm. this was in 2019. Mm. And we just kept in touch. We had a nice bond, uh, and she would reach out every once in a while. And so, um, and, and particularly during the pandemic. And so, you mm. know, I remember sharing with her saying, you know, I've started writing poetry and I'm not really sure what to do with all of this. Yeah. And then I showed her the stack of papers that I had of just accumulated poetry. And she just said to me, you know, um, go through it, kind of collate it, pick mm. your best 100 or so uh mm -hmm. and send them to me and so i did and uh in that process as i was going through and typing that's when i had the realization that so much <sighs> of it was happening in my body i mean i didn't yes. have that awareness before as i was writing it was when wow. i started transcribing the poems that i i kept on thinking like oh wow look all of these are things that are one i'm feeling and i'm feeling them in different places in my body and as mm -hmm. we were discussing uh it was karen herself who said embody um, you know, yes. it was kind of like as we were talking about the poems that the word came and the moment she uttered it, I thought, this is perfect. This is yeah. <laughs> the yeah. correct yes. uh, representation of what this book of poetry is. Yeah. Sony, this, th this beautiful poetry that you've written, um, we can't talk about it without talking about that connection to spirituality and, and in particular, balance 
harmony with nature, those sort of concepts, they seem to link the poetry in this first book, don't they? They do. And and the, the thing is, you know, I think it's important to note that we don't live in isolation. We are mm. we are connected to what's happening. Um, for me, for instance, COVID was an opportunity. I mean, not COVID itself, but the lockdown and the isolation <laughs> yes. was an opportunity for introspection. And I think mm. it was for, for anybody who was sort of paying attention or in that. Yeah, uh, I agree. Mm. Uh, and so if, if you took that on, you started realizing that it's, I wasn't, it wasn't just me going through this. There are so many other people. I mean, we were all going mm. through a kind of a shared experience. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that comes through the poetry because I realized even though it was a very individual experience, it wasn't necessarily mm. unique. Uh, yeah. And you, you, you know, in that isolation also, you'd notice things outside that you wouldn't uh -huh. otherwise hear birds that you wouldn't see otherwise, you know, yes we could go out for, for walks outside. Uh, and I remember just that stillness and all of a sudden, yes, you and the quiet, things. there was quiet. <laughs> That's what so I noticed. Quiet. Like there was no traffic. Uh, the birds seemed louder. The sky seemed brighter. There was no traffic. The quiet yes. was, that was a really beautiful thing to come from that time. It was. And so I had, I had to capture it. I mean, it was part mm. of what, you know, part of the experience, part of what came through, uh, and so a lot of it also is reflected in, in the poetry. Yeah. One of the other things that you noticed as you were collating this collection of poems was there was also a distinct alignment with the body chakras. And you again, you didn't realize until you were <laughs> in that process of, of, of producing the poems and, and getting them together. So can you tell us more about that process and, and how the poems align with the chakras? And then for those that are unfamiliar with the chakras, can we talk a little bit about each of them? Sure. Well, and the thing is with the chakras, uh, you know, they're energetic centers in our body. Yes. Uh, they all relate to different areas, facets, stages in our life. Mm -hmm. And the chakras are something that I've kind of, held in my consciousness for a long time yeah uh, I, I work with them uh, yes yes I'm familiar with them and so mm -hmm. it's in a way the way the, the best way to think about the chakras and especially seeking alignment is mm -hmm. um kind of a natural progression um either through life through yeah. uh, phases of enlightenment uh through just kind of being with ourselves and so the first chakra and there's seven on the body there's far more yes. that are kind of beyond our auras but i dealt yes. specifically with the ones that are on the body, body ones mm. um the 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 first chakra the um uh root chakra uh mm. is sort of where we sit down kind of right yes. <laughs> in a right on that spot, spot. Yes, uh, and it and it deals with with security, security, stability, uh, our sense of of being grounded, and ah. um, it, it's sort of like where the energy starts in order for you to start feeling balanced because you need that grounding mm -hmm. in order for the energy to eventually kind of rise up in your body. Mm -hmm. um, the the second chakra, uh, which is the sacral ch chakra, is in our reproductive system, and it deals yes. with our relations with our emotions, with creativity. Yeah. Uh, it is a reproductive organ, so obviously it's creation, mm -hmm. our relations mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you move up and it's sort of your belly. I'm touching it, but you can't see. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, I can actually feel that. As soon as you, you said that, I can actually feel it. Amazing. Uh, and so this is the solar plexus yeah. uh, chakra. And it's all about our will, our sense of self, mm. uh, our sense of confidence. Um, we move up to the heart chakra, which is in between mm. uh, sort of the center of your body on your breastbone. Yes. Uh, and that one is the, the love center. Uh, yes. And it's not just love in a romantic sense, but it's just, it's love. It's compassion and within kindness and our love to how yes. we extend it to other people. Yeah. Uh, then you have the fifth chakra, which is on the throat. And this is mm -hmm. all about expression, communication. Yeah. There's also a lot of creativity. And so, you know, 
it's yeah. sort of connected and to it's the kind soul, of close but it's, it's close to the part yeah yeah it is it is and it's also about speaking from the heart yes um and then we move up from there to the third eye which is the ajna mm -hmm. Uh, yes. And that is our intuition, our connection sort of within. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, you have the crown chakra, which is on the top of the head. Um, mm. And that is our connection to sort of the, the higher purpose consciousness. and higher consciousness. Yeah. Um, Sonny, I've often, I've always known that the chakras were related, that certain colors associated with those certain chakras. Can you explain to me why that is? How to like I, when I was doing the prep for the show um, last night, I'm thinking I've always known that there are colors associated with the chakras, but I've never actually asked someone why that is or how the colors interact or relate to the chakras. Do you know? So the chakras are it's the color of the rainbow. It's essentially the rainbow. Ah, so the root chakra is the red, uh, yes. and then you get into orange yellow green um and and the heart is interesting because the the heart is represented by two colors it's green for the heart for love and yes. then there's a pink um which is kind of the the, the deeper love uh oh. and then you know it's like a a, a light blue a darker yes. blue a purple and the purple um, yeah and so all the, the colors so so the the red if you think about it for instance mm -hmm. Um, it is it is a grounding color. It comes from the earth. Um, you know, it has that sort of uh, fiery ability, but it, but it's earth driven versus mm -hmm. the purple, which is on the top yes. of your head. And that's why there's a gradation. Is yeah. what connects you to the heavens, um, to to wisdom, to ancient wisdom, to higher wisdom. Yeah. Uh, and so each of the colors is represented, uh, not coincidentally, but the same colors as the rainbow. Yeah. Yeah um the there's a whole range that we could talk about with the the chakras i just think that there's so much wisdom in the knowledge of those things and understanding that those different chakras or energy levels within the body can become blocked did you notice that there was an unblocking around certain chakras when you were going through this process with embody Absolutely. And it was mm -hmm. um, when I when I started realizing uh, and it was really at the time that I was transcribing it when I started realizing yeah. that I was so centered in my body and so mm -hmm. that like the physical is, is part of the expression. It's not in every mm -hmm. poem, but it's definitely yeah, yeah. there um, because chakras is something that I have in my mind, um, mm -hmm. in my consciousness, not necessarily in my mind, but I started recognizing that the, the poems connected one another, but also, you know, they started with this, I have to have a sense of safety um, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, I'm feeling uprooted. I'm feeling sort of kind of at Because it's a big, it's, it's a big thing to take your creative words and then progress them through and publish them and put them out to the public. That's massive. For it many, is many, many people. And but, you know, th that's when I started realizing that in grounding, for instance, which is all about the root chakra, mm -hmm. um, that's when things started opening up. And I started realizing, you know, a lot of what I was going through, not just not just in the writing, but as you said, in the publication process, it was starting with myself, then yeah. sort of going up to the next chakra and looking at what's outside. How do I relate this to other people? Mm -hmm. How do I, you know, essentially partner with other people or collaborate yes. getting my own self-confidence finding a love in that process expressing yes. it and yeah. then you know using that as 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 my intuition to to kind of help guide me through the whole process so it's it's been a very interconnected experience the writing the mm -hmm. chakras the healing mm -hmm. yes. uh, and then even the publishing process yes. uh an interesting <laughs> amazing now when we go back to talking about the book, um, the first book, Embody, was published as um, a hard copy, mm -hmm. and it was a, and it is a beautiful. Yeah. Look, it's. <laughs> I, I hope you can see that audience because they're beautiful books. Like the, the, you, I, when I see them, I want to touch them. Like they're just beautiful. The the writing, the way that they're set out, that the, there's. 
oftentimes I, I speak to other readers about the energy around a book. And for some people, um, they talk about the the desire to pick up a physical book and to feel it and hold it in their hands versus listening to an audio book. And I know from um, being with Sonia and seeing and feeling and picking up and looking at her books, there is definitely an energy around um, Embolden. And so the the first of the books was a beautiful hard copy coffee book that you can put on your coffee table and and display. People can pick up and and read through it. Beautiful book. But you've decided also to um, release Embody as a paperback. Now, it's equally beautiful. So you're not going to tell the difference. But, Sony, what prompted you to then re-release as a paperback? book well Well, the only (laughs) real difference is the size i don't know if you can tell this one is slightly smaller yeah uh, and it's a glossy cover versus a matte and so the Mm -hmm. coffee table book is the the matte version uh and it's also in color so there's a lot of illustrations inside it's beautiful yeah and the soft cover which is what we are releasing now today yes today Today, so, you can get the paperback, people. Today, uh, the so paperback is available. in black and white. And mm-hmm. this was also to make it um, more accessible, uh, mm-hmm. the, the soft cover. Uh, yes. Because the, 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 the uh, hard cover is a beautiful book. It's really it is. what you would it think is. a collector's edition. Whereas yes. this soft cover is now the more accessible one. Um, yeah. You know, we had it in Kindle or uh, as an ebook as well, and people just wanted the hard copy. Uh, and so that's I was why just we- going to say, Sonny, I, I can think of lots of books. When I think of your book, and I'm an avid reader as well, when I think of your book, it's one of those books I'm like, no, I have to have the physical with, with Sony's poetry books you have to have a physical because there's an energy around the beautiful writing within them the book yes well i and and that's why i think this one is now kind of the the more accessible yeah. option so just so you know audience um attached to the show notes will be the links to get the paperback book from now you've also of course got the links to the hard copy which i encourage you if you're after a beautiful coffee Um, table book this is one that you should but if you also want to just get part of Sony's beautiful words and poetry then the paperback is readily available from now from today today it's released (laughs) yes well done Sony and congratulations it it's Thank been you. quite a journey um and to see I have to comment so Sony and I've known each other for um a little while now probably about 12 months maybe mm-hmm. um or so and to see the growth in Sony as she's gone on this publishing journey and yes Sony was very much a quiet person and she still is a beautiful quiet introverted soul for the most part but now she's putting herself out into the public and um, talking more and talking with ease and grace and that beautiful grounded energy that Sony talks about that's what you get when you meet Sony as well so um, I encourage you Everyone to jump on the links they'll be in the chat and underneath this um, show today so that you can jump on and get access to that paper book today is release day so ready and available now and I thought as a celebration of this milestone that we should get you the author to read one of your favorite poems from Embody it will be my pleasure and the one thing that I should note is that yesterday actually marked the one year anniversary of Embody getting published to begin with oh wow (laughs) Wow. we're celebrating a birthday as well you actually have to think that that's an incredible journey so in that 12 months it started with Embody and you'll see in the coming weeks when we talk about um 
Embrace Emboldened and the new book, uh, Lonely Dove. That's a lot of work for an author in 12 months. So well done, Sony. <laughs> well you. done. You, Thank you, you. We have to celebrate. People are a bit blasé about um, celebrating milestones, but I know that that is an awful amount of beautiful creative work and energy that you've put into the world in the space of 12 months, and we should applaud that. Yeah? Thank you so much. Yes, and it is quite an effort, I think, Part Absolutely. of the biggest effort is just getting over your own fears. Definitely. Uh, and, you know, as you said, building confidence, but you have to start, you know, from where you are and and, and, yeah. and embrace the, the journey as it goes. And so I do feel more confident now than I did, like even a year ago when the book first uh, came out. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely hiding. Um, and so for, for that reason, the poem that yes. I've decided to read today actually is pretty emblematic of the journey that I that mm -hmm. I took with what was happening at the time but also um the journey with this uh publishing or the publishing yes. of these books and so it's called for whom I moved here for whom for me because of whom for my writing is of whom for my social life revolves around whom, for my lifestyle colored by whom, for my solitude bare without whom. I moved here following a dream, a vision calling traverse the country, a quieter city, more relaxed, opened up space, changed my lifestyle, healed my hurts, felt more whole, more in love, embodied me, moved here, search and found myself oh beautiful i know i didn't ask you about reading a second poem but that one was so beautiful <laughs> do you think you could indulge me with another one sony sure uh let's see i'm gonna do spark Ah, spark, balanced and relaxed connection, create and design oracles, express with calm feeling, bake croissants from scratch, exercise creativity and hobbies, play a wooden flute, explore interest and joy, magical dishes through the lens, discover the unknown, gazing at stars in Atacama, step strong into happiness, Read all the books I own, natural in goodness, donating what's not in use, embrace what life is, one word at a time, inner power lights the fire within, sparked from the universe. Oh, wow. Okay, so now I have questions. So the first <laughs> poem, the first poem I, I understand because you moved from, was it Texas that you moved, like the, the cities that you changed when I, I moved from Charleston, South Carolina uh, to Idaho. Yes, and so it, that was quite a big change for you, wasn't it? It was, and the, the, the interesting thing was in the same year, so within a year, I moved mm. from Seattle to Charleston to yes. Idaho. I kind of went back and forth across the country. Yeah. Um, and part of it was, so when I was moving from, from Seattle to Charleston, it was because I was being called to Charleston and I felt like yes. that was going to be a good creative space for me, which it ended up being because most of yes. the poetry from the novel <laughs> were born there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then after being in isolation for four months, I realized that I, for my own sake, and then for my parents' sake, we just needed yes. to be together. So I mm -hmm. moved in, in, in Idaho. Uh, yeah. So it was a period of a lot of movement. And because yes. of that kind of feeling adrift, and so that first poem talks about this sort of that, back yes. and forth and how do I feel centered with all the changes that are going on. Yeah. And in the second um, poem, Spark, you talked about some of the things that you would do. Like it, it gave me a visual of the different things that you were trying in that time. And a couple of those things were um, Oracle. So you're a card reader as well? 
I am. I like uh, tarot card readings, oracle card readings. Uh, I don't do it professionally. I just do it for myself. No, no. Yes. Certification. But yes, it's something that I really enjoy. Um, and in fact, incorporated a lot into my into my writing. Sometimes they, they mm-hmm. show up different uh, meaning, significance, and there's quite a lot of symbolism in a lot of them. So I, it's something I enjoy. There is. Do you have a favorite oracle card deck, like a go-to that you that is like the one that like I have lots of them and I actually allow them to call to me so today mm-hmm. I'll read goddess um the goddess cards the the next day it might be angel cards the next day it might be fairy cards and I've got uh ruins as well from my trip to um Iceland are there particular ones that that you go to or that have particular significance for you um, I, I'm like you in the sense that I have so many and I get yeah. drawn to ones at yes. different points, but my, my usual go-to for, in fact, that I carry with me as I travel or uh-huh. you know, sort of rely on, uh, is the Rider weight tarot card. So it's actual kind of your classic tarot cards. Uh, oh. so those, those are the ones that I carry with me all the time. Uh, and I, I like it because you can either just take a quiet moment and pull mm-hmm. one card or pull a mm-hmm. few cards if you wanted mm-hmm. to, or if you, you know, wanted to indulge yourself, then you can do a full reading. A five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I don't do that often anymore. I did when I first started learning about them, but yeah, yeah. they're, they're for me a very good grounding, um, mechanism. I mean, they, they mm-hmm. really help me mm-hmm. kind of feel centered, but in a way mm-hmm. also, uh, as we're talking about chakras, then aligning yes. the chakras and then feel kind of more, more connected to the spirits. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I um, also thinking about um, oracle cards, um, and there I can't think of oracle cards um, without thinking about crystals. And I don't think I've actually asked you about crystals, Sony. And if if that's part and parcel of of your spiritual practices. Absolutely. I carry yeah. crystals again, even as I travel. Uh, one of yes. the things, in, in fact, when I set up my cards, I organize the crystals and I, I have a collection of crystals at home. Uh, so yeah. when I travel, I travel with with little ones. They're, they're mm-hmm. not necessarily the big ones, but they're the ones that um, help me feel um and, and, it's, and it's interesting because they change for every trip. I sort of sit with them and yeah. say, oh, which ones are going to travel with me? And I collect uh-huh. them and then, uh, off they go with me. But yeah, I set them up in my space and that helps me uh, feel that that space is more of my home, even mm. though it's temporary, even if it's a hotel room or an Airbnb yeah. or wherever I happen to be. Uh, and the cards, the, the tarot deck goes with them. <laughs> yes. Ah, okay. So for me, I, I've always had uh, crystals even as far back as when my kids were little. One of, my son collected uh, rocks, as he called them, but they were crystals. And I d- actually didn't occur to me until uh, the last 12 months even that those crystals act- and gems actually have an energy. And that energy is powerful for grounding, release, healing clarity there's a whole range i and i actually didn't consciously realize that there was energy associated with them so if you pick the ones that that travel with you that energy travels with you and surrounds you so i can actually see that that would create a um, safe space for you even when you're traveling and in different hotel rooms across the world Absolutely. And the thing to to note with crystals is that, I mean, essentially everything around us has energy uh, oh, yeah. and crystals come from the earth. So they have they a, a particular grounding and, a, and I mean, they're ancient because, you know, it takes yeah. a long time for a crystal to to be formed. To be formed. And so they, they have that energy already, but they also um, conform to the energy of the people and the situations around them. Mm. Uh, and so sometimes it, it's there they can be healing uh and so you know they 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 protect you uh mm-hmm. they can help kind of magnify some of the energies that you're you're yes. feeling or wanting to express or whatever it is uh and it's important actually to also set an intention with the crystals so the crystals know kind of how to relate to you yeah. uh and so sometimes it, it's it's just as simple as just sitting with it and holding it yes. kind of in your hands yes. and setting yes. the intention with it 
Um, yes. But in that sense, it's also important to clear them on a regular basis because otherwise they get kind of... I did, again, something <laughs> I've learnt in the last 18 months, not realising that these beautiful crystals needed to be cleansed and cleared. So what's your process for cleansing and clearing your crystals, I, Sony? I go with the moons. Um, yes. Full yeah. moons and new moons. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, full moons are really sort of the best time to do it. but To regenerate. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I, I keep them sort of in the light and the night for 24 hours so i will put ah, them sort of yes. outdoors yes. for a 24 hour period if i'm traveling and i don't have access to the outdoors i'll put them on a windowsill uh for yeah, that 24 yeah. hour period and then when ah. the, when it's done you know you you set yeah. up the intention of, of clearing them but then reset the intention of what you want mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. what relation you want to have with your crystals yeah. for that what a beautiful practice so, signing Thank you for sharing that with us. One of the other things that I heard in um, the poem Spark was where you spoke about the flute. Can you tell us about that? Because you associate, uh, flute playing is often associated with religious or spirituality practices. So I'm curious to know your experience with the flute over that COVID time. Well, and the interesting thing is that it's actually not mine per se, but uh, one mm -hmm. of my friends, she started picking up the flutes. And so she used to play the flute before. Yes. And when we were in the middle of, of lockdown, she, she and she has a collection and these are wooden flutes that oh, she's collected all over the US. They would be uh, beautiful. And, yeah, what was fascinating with that is um she sometimes when we were when we were speaking with each other because we had a set call every monday night uh she would she started mm. playing them for me and mm. the sounds the images that they evoked i mean it was really uh, powerful and very profound uh and so that's why you know it, it showed up in this poem as a spark connection yeah. with the all all i did was listen <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't play. learn to play it was your friend that learned to play but it sparked something in you yes because I, I when I would hear her I, I mean in fact I think I wrote it's not in embody it's in fact not been published yet but <gasps> I wrote a poem about all the images that came up in yes. my mind as she changed yes. foods so she would play oh, one food and I'd wow. think about Alaska for instance and it was just an, mm. and she didn't intend for it she just was playing it uh, and mm -hmm. then I, you know, she'd play another fruit and I started thinking about uh, Arizona and the mesas in Arizona. Oh, and yeah, yeah. She did something else and I was in the jungle somewhere else. And these were all just things that would come to me as I listened to her. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it was actually quite beautiful and quite profound. Um, but I, for the next show, if you remind me, I will. Yes, yes. Read it. <laughs> okay, excellent. That would be amazing because um, they're they're also an ancient instrument, mm -hmm. aren't they? They've been around for a very, very, very long time, um, and you can trace the history of flutes right back to the beginning of time, almost. And um, there's something about so the first flutes were like. Uh, carved out of um, uh, wood from trees so they're very mm -hmm. earthy and grounding um, in terms of their their energy but then the music that comes from that combination is really very special and if people are actually listening to meditative um, music or scripts the flute will feature often in that music won't it it, it will. And the thing with flutes also is as you change the wood uh, and however the construction of I the flute I didn't know is, that. Um, it, it resonates with different frequencies and the different frequencies affect the body in different ways. They affect uh, different yes. chakras. They yes. affect your emotions. They bring about yes. healing. And, and my friend who was, who was playing these, uh, Rebecca, she had the intention. She's a music teacher she's a yes. Uh, yes I think she teaches guitar lessons um mm -hmm. but she had the intention for these flutes to bring about healing without you even knowing so she wanted to play the the flute I was play just the gonna and, ask um, you that because um, we know scientifically so this is not this is outside of you know the spiritual realm but scientifically certain level of hurts 
um, have different, which is sound, the level of sound, have defined and science-backed um, uh, effects on the body. So if you're wanting to heal, I think it's uh, I think it's 438 is the healing hurts, the abundance hurts is like 888. So that's the sound of the music. So this there's a powerful overarching um, concept here that we have at our fingertips a whole range of things to express, to create and to heal our body. And they're, you know... We don't consciously think about those things often enough. Um, and I'm so glad that your friend um, did that for you because I, I, now I can't <laughs> wait to hear the I can't wait to hear the poem next week. Um, the other thing that occurred to me too when I was um, I've been doing lots of reading around um, poetry etc cetera, etc cetera, in prep for our shows, and I noticed that often poetry is looked at as a feminine interest. Now that's not to say that we don't have very wonderful and amazing male poets but it is often um, a female interest and um, it, it's perceived as a as a feminine activity have you found that Sony since you've started on the poetry writing path um I mean it, it's it's an inst interesting observation I think once yeah. I heard you say it I thought oh well I guess you know it's true and I think a lot of it is you know Traditionally, all writers, including poets, were men. And yeah. as women have found their yes. voice and as yes. they're expressing their voice, poetry is sort of a natural way to do it. Because mm. I think the beauty of poetry is that it captures a snapshot. Uh, yes. It captures a moment. It captures one little thing. You don't, you don't necessarily have to go into this long form of, uh, you know, essays to just mm. express mm. Uh, what is going on uh, in that particular moment. And I think it's become something that women have just embraced because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, absolutely an accessible I'm, way of, of yeah. expression and receiving uh, the yeah. message. Because I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of you, and then I'm thinking of the beautiful Kelly Van Nielsen, mm -hmm. and completely different styles, but equally powerful and just for the audience um kelly van nielsen um her poetry is is powerful isn't it sony it, it is it is emotion evoking it's yes. energy evoking it and it moves you on a level that is that is equally as powerful as sony's but it's different so two female poets modern day female poets in very different realms but doing poetry um in a beautiful way and I think Kelly, and that's the thing with, with poetry in general, but um, Kelly has this beautiful way of capturing oh, yeah. action, um, mm. almost aggression. Yes. And, and it expresses it in a way that really makes you feel like you really feel that you're carrying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, whereas, for instance, mine is a lot softer. <laughs> <laughs> but equally equally beautiful and equally moving so so what i'm trying to say is for any women in particular who are listening or even the guys like guys can create amazing poetry it's just that for women and i keep saying this we have been um a little downtrodden for millennia and we're waking up and as we're waking up we're starting to experience the beautiful creative words of different female poets and that's a good thing for the world it is because it, it also helps us feel that we're not alone. And I think that's mm -hmm. the beauty of poetry, that you're just expressing, for instance, your life experience, your perception, uh -huh. watching in that moment. But the likelihood that somebody else can connect with that is really high. Um, and so it's, and it's important, Sony, isn't it? Like it, it's important that people um, across the world don't feel alone and if one of your poems connects to someone at a period of time where they're feeling alone that's mind-blowingly amazing isn't it it is and i think you know it 
it sort of speaks to what we were talking about earlier, just finding the courage of expressing and sharing your voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Because sometimes, and, and that was something that I had to learn. And, you know, as a woman, and I have to agree, I have to agree. <laughs> I, I've seen this beautiful evolution of, of Sony. And I'm so privileged to be able to share you with the world. Because I see into the future that there is a massive space there where your poetry will connect with people and start them on a healing and self-discovery um, process and connect with them in a way that helps them. And that's all you ever ever want to do is to actually be able to help another human through a moment of crisis or through a moment of healing or through a moment of understanding. But it takes courage. And I again, I have to applaud Sony for the courage it takes to go from nothing and never written poetry before to writing, channeling and producing beautiful poems. It's a tremendous amount of courage that it takes to step forward into the world. And people listening might think in the audience that, oh yeah, everyone's doing it. Everyone's writing a book, everyone, etc., etc. Well, no, they're not Sony. Only Sony can channel what's given to her. It's unique, it's precious, it's a gift but it takes courage to release it to the world. Because once you release it to the world, you open yourself up to a whole range of things that for some people, they may feel that they're better off protected from, yeah? Yeah, and it, it and that's the thing, I think, capturing your uniqueness. And sometimes you feel like, oh, well, who's gonna care what I have to say or who's going to relate Someone to Someone will, someone will, will. Yes. absolutely. It's important for us to get our, our voices out and express and share uh, because you never know how it can touch somebody. Uh, and, the you know, sometimes Absolutely. I've gotten feedback that one particular poem really helped um, somebody in some way. And to me, it just it blows my mind because all yeah. I was doing was just, you know, expressing writing what was, what was given through. to you. Um, but, you know, somebody else just is able to take it and, and, and really take it on board. And some people have told yeah. me that they printed my poems and put them yes, on, and put them on the walls. Or... Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Walls. That's beautiful. Sony, you love to hear from people that have got your books and how the poems have affected them, oh, don't absolutely. you? Like you love to hear what absolutely. people thought. You love to hear how that poem has helped or, or, or what it has meant to them. Like from a writer's perspective, that's the highest ideal, isn't it? For people it to is. give you feedback about what they're they're reading, and particularly your poems, which have such beautiful messages within them. Um, I encourage you today, if you're watching this um, interview and you want to connect with Sony, please do. Please don't think that people <laughs> don't want to hear from you, because we do. Don't like Sony, you. We do. genuinely want to hear from people about how the poems have um, affected them and what what they think. So I think Absolutely. that's a I mean, wonderful any, thing. any feedback is always, it's just such a blessing. It feels like, yes. oh, wow. I mean, I've, I've either somebody connected with, with it in mm -hmm. some way. So in, in a way it makes you feel like all of the, all of the work that I've put out there has actually yeah. now um, made sense. Like I, I can yes. see sort of why I was able yes. to get on this journey. And so, yes, yeah. it's beautiful. People share that. And, and even has it, I say, even negative feedback is helpful as well because it just highlights a human response and it may, and it's probably got, I know that it's got nothing to do with Sony, but that poem is actually triggering a response in that person. So if there's negative feedback that's triggering something, a response in that person that at some stage, maybe not now, but at some stage that will get them on um, a healing and growth journey, which is what they need, isn't it? It is. And I think any response is, is still very personal, yeah. whether it's a positive yes. or a negative. You know, people are going to look are at people? it based on their own life, based on their own perspective. Obviously, mm -hmm. they don't have minds, so they don't they don't know how to interpret necessarily my experience. And that's not what sharing is about. Sharing is about 
the the person yeah. who's been reading it and their yeah. experience and whether it's yeah. positive or negative i mean the fact that it's creating some emotion is a good thing it's a good thing <laughs> it is really a good thing sony as we close out the show today i want to remind people um that you have a beautiful website it's sonysing.com and the book the paperback of embody is released today and it's available at MMH Press, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Indie Bond, and of course, Sony's website, sonysing.com. Sony, thank you so much for coming on the show again today in amongst all of your amazing travels. I look forward to our shows each week. We have beautiful conversations and I'm so glad that I get to talk to you and share you with the world. Sony, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for being here at the launch of Yay! Embody. Go so. out and get that paperback, people. Go out yeah. and buy the book now. All right. <laughs> we will be back next week to talk about another one of Sony's beautiful poetry books. Um, I'm sorry. Next week is the launch of her first novel, another big show, another great conversation with Sony and a very exciting time for us to share this space with Sony. This is Poetry in Motion. I'm your host and the beautiful Sony Singh is my co-host and we will see you next week. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.